Hello. Welcome. Um, now that I know that Scientologists actually uh, watch my videos, I'm hoping that I can use this platform to try and reach them and hopefully to give them something that will help them to wake up. Something that I always found rather strange um, was that there were no photographs of L. Ron Hubbard used officially in the Church of Scientology that were taken after 1967. Now, it's pretty strange because he lived for another 19 years. So, two questions. One, why don't they use photographs of Ron from 1967 onwards? And where was he during that time? I actually know where he was and what he was doing and why he did it. So I know quite a lot. Um, all the information is available online. And I know that even saying that to a Scientologist is tantamount to saying it's not true. But actually, guys, just take a look. So um, here's a photograph of L. Ron Hubbard. That was taken in the early 1970s. Oh no, hang on a second. No, no, that was taken at Golden Era when he was making movies. Because he's got the beret on, you see, because he was an artist, so he wore a beret. I'm a bit the same, you know, I mean, I, I wear costumes and things and different outfits to suit whatever mood I'm in. Um, but there, that's, that's pretty useful stuff. Now here's another thing here. This is actually a lot of L. Ron Hubbard. This is a court document, an official court document. There's the court stamp at the bottom there. And this has um, got L. Ron Hubbard's handwriting on it. And I know it, I recognize it, because, you know, I read a lot of stuff. And basically, it's his instructions for the Operation Freakout um, um, program, where Paulette Cooper was framed. And it's, it's quite incredible to actually see this. Write the following letter on a library typewriter. I wonder why that was done. And address the envelope to blah, blah, blah on the same typewriter. Absolutely no prints. <laughs> and this is the letter that Ron wanted the people to write. You are a traitor to your people, you bastard. Spelt wrongly, spelled E-R-D. I doubt a journalist like Paul at Cooper would wrongly spell the word bastard. But anyway, I've been there and seen what you have done. You're one of them. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to bomb you. I have connection. Nobody can touch me. You carry a German flag. You should be in the concentration camps. And this is pretty sick, because Paul Air Cooper was actually born in a concentration camp. I feel so ill because of you. And you goddamn pigs, you die soon. Um, oh, it just goes on and on. It's, it's wrong pretending to be Paul Air Cooper rambling. Um, then he gets a little saying here and says... The above letter should be typed onto the blank sheet obtained in Operation, you know, Target Number One, which was to get a blank sheet of paper with Paulette's fingerprints on. They actually did all this, by the way, and it was proved in court. And then there's a handwritten note. If the above one and two don't work out for any reason, do the same actions at TM with family and something something I can't quite work out so here's L. Ron Hubbard actually directing a completely illegal operation shocked I should be but I'm not and here is a list of various criminal Scientologists who've been convicted of things because I mean I'm bringing this up because let's look at the legalities of Scientology first person mentioned on it is L. Ron Hubbard arrested in 1948 for petty theft unindicted conspirator co-conspirator in obstructing justice, burglary of government offices, theft of documents and government property, <sighs> fine for leaving an infant in a car during a lecture, convicted of fraud in France and sentenced to four years in prison, never faced the charges, expelled from Morocco for trying to overthrow the government, and expelled from Rhodesia. He's also banned from England, but I mean, I mean, he says he went to the, the sea and founded the Sea Org to you know, get off the main you know, distractions of society and find a nice quiet place where he could do his research. No, he was fleeing the law. Okay, so 
Arthur Solomayan, arrested for terrorism, smuggling weapons and connections to Al-Qaeda. Gabriel Williams, convicted of sexual battery, sodomy of a child in excess of 100 times in California. Donald Anthony Strawn, again, sexually molesting two girls. It's interesting that that one should come up, isn't it? Because a lot of Scientologists sit on um, confessions of child molestation in spite of the fact that you're not supposed to do that. It's illegal to actually not tell the police anything that you know. Uh, James Barber, endangering the welfare of a minor. Uh, sexual molestation of a 15-year-old girl. Dutch Scientologist Willem van Rompuy, convicted of the murder. Uh, Jean-Jacques Mazier, convicted of manslaughter and fraud. Gary Don Beals, diagnosed schizophrenic, killed his father, stabbed his mother. Reed Slatkin, we all know about Reed Slatkin, that was the Ponzi scheme, the biggest ever in the history. I've got like six pages of this, it just goes on and on and on. Um, it brings us up to date quite nicely as well, like starting off with L. Ron Hubbard and it talks about Scientologists. Um, I have another documentation which goes on for about 70 something pages with a list of all the crimes that Scientologists have committed. Um, it's, it's pretty horrible, it's pretty horrible. Um, uh, so there's your chance to wake up, I've given you some information there, you can do what you like with it. Um, I did actually write um, a letter to Scientologists when I first started protesting, giving them a chance to wake up and so on, and I actually believe that they read this letter out at a public meeting and all laughed. Way to go guys, keep on laughing because you know something? We will win because we are right. We are the righteous boys. We've got right on our side. You guys are criminals.